Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Doran Aldana, MortgageMarketingCoach.com, coming at you with another episode of the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. And today I've got a little something special for you today. I have an interview with uh, my man, the real deal, Chris Real, who is the indeed, without any shadow of a doubt, the absolute expert when it comes to real estate and mortgage marketing Facebook ads. So I figured we'd topic something that's quite uh, relevant now and in the future, especially in the social media craze world. We're gonna talk about why most mortgage marketing Facebook ads don't work and how to fix it, how to do it right. So Chris, thanks for joining me with me today, man. It's gonna be fun. Yeah, man, no problem. I appreciate it, looking forward to it. Absolutely. So. We talk about Facebook ads. Everyone seems to be doing it nowadays. You know, how do I get leads on Facebook? That's probably an important question, but even more important than that is why to get Facebook leads. I mean, that's probably the place to start because a lot of people, especially those uh, people who've been in the game a while, they're rather um, hesitant to get into the space because it's so foreboding. I mean, all this techie stuff, computers, social media, a lot of the old school pe peeps who have been in the game for a while, they tend to shudder and cringe at the idea of getting into this techno space because let's be real, it's it's a huge learning curve. Um, yeah. And the question that I think begs to be asked before we get into this conversation is why even bother getting leads on Facebook? Why not just go after Zillow leads or Quicken leads or Lending Tree leads or say, screw any of those leads. I'm just gonna go pure 100% by referral from referral partners, from realtors, from past clients. So why don't we kick things off with that? Why even bother getting leads through Facebook? Yeah, I mean, um, there, there's a bunch of different reasons why we want to get leads from Facebook. Number one, um, so for for me personally, because I've been in the industry for a long, long time, and you know, originated for a long time, and like 18 years or so. Why I started generating leads on Facebook was because I was tired as a loan officer. I was tired of um, being hit up, frankly, by realtors who are outstanding realtors, by the way, but just you know, on ad spend and you know partnerships and all that good stuff. When I knew there had to be a better way and 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 uh, to get leads cheaper, because you know at the end of the day, a Zillow lead for a realtor and or a loan officer could be upwards from fifty dollars to one hundred and fifty dollars, right? So mm -hmm. I was like, listen, if these guys are getting leads and they were getting leads PPC you know, with uh, pay-per-click, but if they're getting leads, you know, this way, we have to be able to get leads as well and be able to generate, especially now more than ever, man, you can actually get the leverage back in your own hands and generate leads for a, for a very low cost on Facebook, long form leads, right? On Facebook for a fraction of the cost um, that you can, or, you know, with some of the other lead, you know, quick, you know, lending tree and Zillow and, you know, leads.net and free rate update.com and all those, you know, all those different avenues, you could take the control back in your own hands and not have to worry about uh, the leads being exclusive. And that's the other thing. It's like the leads aren't exclusive, number one. In, in most cases, they're not. You pay a premium um, if they are so called exclusive. Yeah, not, yeah. That you, not that you notice any difference in the conversion rate either way, but. You'll yeah. pay probably three times more to get the exclusive leads, so yeah. called. Yeah, for sure. The other thing too is, you know, if you, you know, if you're generating your own leads and you have it, you know, um, and and at a cost per lead that is obviously a lot less, a fraction of the cost. I was then able to use that as kind of bait, you know, for my real estate to grow my real estate or my mortgage uh, origination practice. So. It was like, hey, look, you know, I, I'm actually generating more leads and I actually have realtors to give them to. Let's partner up. You know, let's have coffee and talk about it. And if you if you kind of fit the bill, we'll plug you in. Right. So the pendulum swung the other way as far as a referral, you know, reciprocation is concerned. It was like, hey, look, now I've, I've got to actually, you know, now I've got a value add that um, that most don't. And once that got out, people started contacting me instead of meeting realtors. Hey, look, what are you doing? How can you help me? And blah, blah, right? Mm -hmm. So right. That, was, that was the other reason why um, that I really dove in Facebook to fa the Facebook side of things a long time ago was because, hey, look, you know, to separate ourselves from the pack, 
right? We need to add value added services and everybody knows that, but what the hell is a value added service? Well, mm -hmm. frankly, realtors want business or they want you to help them grow their business, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is a way to do it in a very, without contracts, right? Without getting into a six month contract with Zillow or three month contract with Zillow or putting upfront money up with, you know, with, uh, with, um, you know, in long-term contracts, et cetera, you can actually do it and scale it however you want. You could spend $10 a day, you could spend $50 a day, you could spend $5 a day. You could shut it off one day and you could turn it on two weeks later, you know? Mm -hmm. So it, there's just a lot more flexibility. And if you know how to do it right, um, it's, uh, it's a home run. So a few points I heard in that, Chris, that I want to highlight. One is by having your own method to self-source your own leads, in this case, Facebook, you're able to diversify your lead stream. So the whole principle of building stability through diversification, right? So instead of just relying on the realtors you already have and whatever business they happen to do and hoping, wishing and praying, they're going to send you more and continue to send you more instead of just relying on clients. You're able to build multiple streams of those lead streams in your business. So that builds more stability, more certainty, which is the perennial challenge for most mortgage professionals is worrying where their next deal is going to come from. Right. You know, worrying about the up and down yo-yo, the roller coaster ride up yeah. one month down the next feast or famine. And then the other piece is not just diversifying but differentiating. So having a unique value proposition, have a differentiation point, when you're going after these realtors, instead of being the proverbial mortgage parasite, you know, chasing after them with the same old bullshit everyone else is offering, great rates, great service, throw me a bone, smiling and down on Mondays, for example, like all the other disciples of these coaching programs that are just getting them to just throw yogurt at the fan, hoping something sticks with nothing compelling, nothing unique. Um, yeah. This actually gives you something compelling where you actually have the cookie. You got what they want, which is the lead. Yeah, They yeah. need you now more than you need them. Now you're qualifying them versus them qualifying you. So that changes the whole game that flips the script. And then the other piece is the dollar amount. Instead of paying up the wazoo for crap leads from Lending Tree, Zillow, et cetera, that makes you a replaceable commodity because anyone can go and just be a customer of Zillow or Lending Tree, right? And then yeah. you have other companies buying for the same leads, calling on the same leads. These people are tire kickers for the most part. They're looky loos. They're price shoppers. They're going to price shop you all day long, way more than your own exclusive lead that you originated on your own. So you're getting a better quality lead at a lower dollar amount. And that means your ROI goes way up and you've got the differentiation factor and you've got the diversification factor. So all that being said, we got the D3 on that bad boy. We got differentiation. We got diversification and we got lowering the dollar amount on how much you're paying per lead. Is that the idea? Yeah, for sure. So yeah. any of you guys who have been uh, smoking the procrastination dope on waiting to get into this self-source lead generation thing, you guys need to snap out of your stupor and get with the times, friends. Those of you who sleep on this are going to go to sleep permanently. You're going to get out of the business because your competition who stay on the front lines of this, not being trailing edge, be leading edge, but on the cutting edge of this stuff, those are the ones who are going to dominate. And those of you who are asleep at the wheel on this, you're going to, chances are, you're going to be most and uh, first affected by market conditions as things become more difficult in this competitive marketplace. And the ones who dominate on the internet marketing space, social media space, who know, know how to diversify their lead streams, the best marketers are going to be least and last affected by market conditions. Mark my words, we're going to be seeing people drop like flies when things start to really, when the shit really starts to hit the fan. As rates go up, as things get more competitive, we've got all these, you know, uh, refi crabs crawling out from their refi rocks, clamoring for the same realtors now. Everyone's clamoring for the same realtors. What are you going to do to stand out? This is the secret sauce, baby. Generating your own quality leads that actually convert. You've got the cookie now. So let's talk about why it is that so many mortgage pros not only, you know, get the idea that self-sourcing is a good idea, not only get the idea that Facebook advertising is a good idea, but now they're going out there and actually trying it. And they're realizing this isn't as easy as it's cracked up to be. <laughs> and there's a million and one ways to lose your shirt with any kind of advertising, Facebook ads being no exception. So let's unpack this topic of why most Facebook ads 
for mortgage pros in particular, but certainly for small business owners in general, don't work. Why don't we unpack that? Let's start off with uh, maybe just unpacking some of the key elements of um, pit holes or pitfalls or snags that a lot of mortgage pros might fall into there. Yeah. So the number one thing that that I see is um, just ter terrible ad copy. You know that. So that's the number one thing is, uh, you know, I see it come up in my feed in general, like just in my my own news feed. The, the ad copy, the ad copy is is horrible. Um, so what uh, makes for a horrible for horrible ad copy? Just so people can get a grasp on what what does horrible ad copy look like, sound like? Yeah. So so ad copy is two you know two two things, right? So you have you, you know the the actual verbiage, you know the words, and then you've got pictures and or video, right? Um, most of the time, what, what I see is people are, their ad copy, there's no call to action, number one. Number two, meaning that there has to be a reason, you know, a direction that you're trying to lead the perspective lead to, right? And that action is to get to a landing page and become a lead, right? So you, the, the action and the, um, and the call to action is typically never not there. That's number one in the ad copy. Number two, um, a lot of times the pictures are horrible. If people are using pictures, mm -hmm. um, they're, they're just not good. Uh, you know, and so you've got to have pictures of, you know, vibrant, you, like it, when somebody's scrolling through the, the newsfeed, they've got to look at them and stop, right? You got to remember in Facebook different than PPC when you're at or pay-per-click, like advertising on Google, people aren't looking for you, right? Right. You're looking for them. So right. you gotta have very, very compelling. This is the first thing. Like you can have terrible ad copy um, and a great landing page, but if you can't get to pe the people there to the landing page, nothing's gonna convert. The first thing you need to do is have decent um, ad copy so that when people are scrolling through, they stop, you mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. So in our business, in, in the real estate and mortgage business, you do that in two ways. Like you have to have great pictures and or video and video lately has been the, you know, the key to the success um, kind of differentiate. Like you talk about differentiating ourselves in the marketplace, like you got to differentiate yourself in the advertising space too. So video has been a key component of that lately in the agency. Um, so, it, you know, in, in our clients. So I think, that's a key component in in um, in going forward is creating video, creating content. Um, it has to be compelling video content, short to the point with a call to action, uh, along with ad copy on top of it that's short to the point and and with a call to action. So I think that's really the number one thing that I see because I can a lot of times I can't see the targeting and I can't see you know with everybody else's, you know, ads that come through feed, I'm like, this guarantee this is not going to perform. Mm -hmm. um, I can see the landing page where they, you know, where they're trying to drive traffic to and all that good stuff, but I can't see the targeting, which we're going to get into that because that's number two. But yeah, it actually probably could have been number one, because if you think about it, um, you don't know what bait to use to attract the critter if you don't know what kind of critter you're wanting to attract. So that's probably, yeah. probably a good place to start is who the heck are you trying to target? And then what is it that they're interested in? What's the the ideal bait to attract them? Um, so maybe we can jump into targeting and then button things down with how that fits into the right messaging and the right imaging uh, based on the targeting. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Targeting's a big- Why don't we dive into targeting? So obviously um, we've talked about the messaging, the images, the copy. Uh, let's now go to really the catalyst of the whole campaign, which is who the heck are you trying to target? Who's your ideal target? So that's probably one of the biggest reasons why Facebook ads don't work for a lot of mortgage pros is either their targeting is way too broad, it's way too general, um, or their targeting and how they have their targeting set up isn't actually targeting who they want to target or a combination thereof. So why don't we unpack that a little bit in terms of like, where are some of the biggest pitfalls you see in where mortgage pros, you know, really drop the ball on their targeting, where they where they're messing it up? Yeah, I mean, so you got to remember, like, um, a broader target 
is usually is not necessarily the best. And I think mm -hmm. a lot of people look at it, look, I'm going to target, you know, 20 mile radius of Boston is 5 million people, but to spend the $10 a day, right? So that, so the, so the general audience is 5 million people that they're, they're spending $10 a day. Their reach is only 2,400. You, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? 2,400 mm -hmm. impressions. So the key to targeting is be, be just actually just like, just like uh, ad copy, you got to be precise to the point and know who you're targeting, right? Um, and also, you, you got to understand the algorithm a little bit too. So, and that's that's one of the other big things. Like, unless you're doing this, um, you know, day in and day out, et cetera, like I've been doing for the last, you know, three, four, five years almost now, it's you got to be in it. And you get to be like, I failed a ton, right? I've spent thousands and thousands of thousands of dollars learning um, how to how to generate leads and generate um, I mean, one campaign in general. I can tell you, I've, I've spent almost probably fifty grand um, right. just just testing it. Um, so it's called stupid tax, figuring out but, how it doesn't work, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta, <laughs> but, but unfortunately, sometimes you gotta kind of you know you gotta kind of you know shoot aim fire type thing in, mm -hmm. in advertising right like you split test and you and then you you know you reduce down and knowing the algorithm helps do that um so targeting is a big thing so let's just let's just think about this right so you've got five thousand five hundred thousand people in a, in a in an audience right you're spending ten dollars a day okay that five like and your reach might be from 500 to 2,500 people a day. Okay. Mm -hmm. now, you're not going to reach that whole five, 500,000. Mm -hmm. So how are you going to find the segment in that 500,000, right? That is going to perform. How are you going to do that the quickest and most efficient way possible? And that's right. where I see a lot of folks fail. Honestly, that's where a lot of folks completely fail. They don't understand how to get to the segment that's going to perform because Facebook, what Facebook does is like, they're going to, they're going to guess, right? So they're going to, they're going to take a segment. Okay. They're going to say, if you're going to, you, you know, you're serving your ad up to 18 to 65 year olds, right. That have, you know, a bunch of different interests that you might, you know, think work, but at the end of the day, you get, you, you whittle it down. You whittle that 5 million to 500,000. Well, Facebook's gonna guess on with your ten dollars a day which segment of that five hundred thousand is gonna perform quickest or it's mm -hmm. gonna perform the best. So what they do is they literally it they guess, okay, and then based upon your um, your results, they'll serve the ad up if you're if you're if the ad is you know if the pixels are correct correct and all that good stuff, they'll serve the ad up to the over time to the best segment, right? Uh, the problem is, is most people on, you know, most people that kind of the, the DIYers. The dabblers. Um, yeah, the, you know, do-it-yourselfers. They don't, they, they don't have the, the, you know, the gut uh, or the, the stamina to stay in it until you're gonna win it, right? Mm -hmm. Cancel it too quick and, you know, they can't go, the ad's not working. Well, you know what? The problem is you don't know how to fire the ads off properly, number one. And the way you're firing them off, you, you, it's going to take a while for Facebook's algorithm to, to catch up, right? Mm -hmm. And figure out what segment of that 500,000 is the best segment to continually, you know, um, set your ads to. So targeting is huge. Mm -hmm. Targeting is, is a yeah. very, very uh, important foundation. factor. Yeah, it's, it's the foundation. It's the foundation. And, you know, you can have a great target audience, though, and you and no ad, and terrible ad copy, and you suck. So, yeah. it, it, you know, the everything has to fall in line, right? Yep. Everything has to fall in line. So I imagine one of the questions inside of targeting people have is, what's better for me to do? What gives me the highest likelihood of success, refi or purchase? Uh, what would you say to that? I would say refis um, in this market and in, in, in a rising interest rate environment is a waste of money. Right. So, so now we're looking at purchase. Thinking, you could do some debt consolidation type stuff and, you know, at people that have HELOCs and, you know, up, up in Canada, there's a lot of second mortgages. But I mean, down here, more than Canada, I think there's there's um, a lot of second mortgages. Interest rate environment, you know, you could 
you could make the claim that, hey, look, it's better for you to consolidate that that second or even, you know, any other high interest debt now that equity has been built, et cetera. The, the, the issue there, though, is um, the cost per lead's a lot higher for purchase business. And you're still going to be on that roller coaster based upon rates, right? Anybody like- The cost per lead's higher with refi or purchase? With refinances. With refinances. Really yeah. Higher refinances. Um, so because you can't, you can't target, right? You can't target people that have a huge high debt load or- you know, right. the scores You're are throwing you know, the yogurt at the pan, churning through a lot of gravel to find the gold nuggets there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, there your are mic keeps scratching out since the once in a while, brother. I hope uh, we can rectify that. It comes back relatively quickly, but you've scratched out three times now. So something, oh, yeah. something wiggy's going on with your mic. Is it scratching now? No, you're good. It just happens once in a while, and it happens for like a second or a split second, and then it comes back. So huh. kind of weird. All right, so. Um, I would say the, the best thing as far as, um, targeting is concerned. So, you know, you're, you're always going to be on the roller coaster of rates if you're going to be in a refi environment all the time. Right. So uh, purchase leads are where it's at on Facebook. They are, mm -hmm. um, because you're going to have a self-sustaining group of individuals that you're targeting that will build a pool. I always tell everybody, you're building a fishing pond, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're building a fishing pond of, you know, thousands of people that have asked about your service that over time, you're just going to keep converting that fishing pond and, and being able to fish out of that, that pond if you segment it correctly and follow up correctly. And the pond would be obviously a, a more optimized ad that's maturing and and performing better, but also the pond of opt-ins, people that you've actually captured contact information, we'll call them prospects, that are maturing at different rates and are converting at different rates. Some are hot for what you got, some are lukewarm, some are pretty cold. So the pond being all that, right? Yeah, for sure, for yeah. sure. Okay, yeah. so I think we've beat uh, the most essentials uh, like, uh, I think we be beat the dead horse on the, the targeting, although we could probably spend all day on targeting if we had the time. Um, but for the sake of brevity, I think we'll move on. Um, for those of you who are just wanting a recap on the targeting, the biggest thing you want to look at is, okay, purchase leads is really the sweet spot right now. So now what type of purchase leads do you want? Do you want first time buyers? Do you want VA? Um, typically on Facebook, the first time buyer or the VA or some kind of specific niche like that is going to give you better results than just spraying and praying for anything, uh, or certainly better results than jumbo <laughs> for the most part, jumbo, you won't find on Facebook. Uh, the cost per lead will be exceedingly high because it's just, there's not a high concentration of that kind of clientele who just happens to be looking for a mortgage. That's probably going to be, um, better targeting on AdWords where they're seeking you out or through a realtor partner or through a client referral. So that's Facebook targeting. Let's talk now, now we're circling back. So now we know the target market, let's say it's VA or let's say it's a first time buyer in a particular zip code. Now we're moving to the ad copy. Now we need the right messaging and we need the right um, image imagery to grab their attention. Because again, we're not channeling demand like AdWords where someone's seeking us out we're creating demand. We're literally stopping them in their tracks as they're scrolling and catching their eye with some kind of eye candy and then grabbing them in, in with the ad copy and then hopefully gaining enough interest and curiosity to have them want to click the link to learn more. So what typically, we've talked about bad ad copy, bad imagery, boring, snoring, boring stuff, Dollsville stuff, um, stuff that isn't relevant to the particular target market, the you know same old, same old, or not having a clear call to action. Um, you've talked about what does work in terms of having video. Video has been performing exceedingly well uh, based on our testing. I think we've been averaging like between five and $10 a lead for most people without video, but with video, we've seen like leads uh, as little as what, two, three bucks a pop? Yeah. Yeah, like I mean, insane. it's not the norm. It's not the norm, but yeah. No, yeah. But I mean, video, historically, if we split test video versus no video, we're getting like half the cost per lead with video. Right? Yeah, because over time, what happens is, is you can actually retarget based on video views. So, um, you know, 
there's it's an e there's an easier way to retarget with video. Um, so over time, the frequency of people people seeing your your face mm -hmm. is you know, and if they can relate to that face, <laughs> then right. they'll uh, then they'll become a lead. So if they don't see it the first time. Uh, the way we run ads, they're going to see it the second time and the third time and the fourth time and the fifth time and the sit, and then all of a sudden they're going to fill the form out, you know? Yeah, so, no, that, that, that's a great point. You mentioned about, you know, if they can relate to our face, if they can relate to how we're showing up. Obviously, if you're doing video and you're, you've got the personality of a rock, that's not going to serve very well for uh, being able to get conversion. The best video yeah. conversion we've seen is from people who've got great presence in front of the camera, great energy. They speak uh, with power, with certainty, with confidence. It's not necessarily long winded, but it's powerful. It's punchy. It's got high, you know, great energy. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's the kind of person someone would be like, this, this is the guy or this, this is the gal I want to work with. This person seems like they know what they're talking about. So, uh, we've covered the ad copy slash imagery slash bait that we're going to use to get them to click. Now let's say they click. There's the next place that we can lose people, which is the landing page. So they click on it, they land on the landing page. Whether you are able to convert this person or not has a huge amount to do with whether or not you actually get their information. <laughs> if you don't get their information, chances are you're not gonna work with them. So maybe point out a couple of the snags, um, the landmines that you see there, Chris, in terms of what typically goes wrong on the landing page. Yeah, so a lot of folks, um, the biggest thing I think on a landing page is, is the landing page has got to be simple too, you know, just like, okay, I see a lot of people like pushing their ad copy to their, to their, like their mortgage app, right? Like, or their homepage on their boring website. Their mortgage app or like people aren't going to just dive in and fill out an application, right? They're just not going to do that. So, um, well, I shouldn't say that. There'll be a percentage of people that will do that. Um, if very, you're very small. Convert, like a, a good converting landing page converts at 20% or higher. Well, like 15% or higher, depending on the, the ad, right? So out of 100 people that get there, you've got 15 leads at the least. If it's anything less than that, you know, it's just, it, it's not converting well. So, and conversion... It, Two things. One, um, colors make a big difference. Submit buttons, believe it or not, make a big difference in the color of them. The, the, the ability for folks to fill it out mobily is completely essential. Mobile so friendly. If you're pushing to a landing page that isn't mobile friendly, you might as well just take that money and burn it in a, in a, in a, a, a barrel because – or the majority of the folks, <laughs> yeah, right. Just throw it in the crapper, but <laughs> but the majority of the folks, right, that are filling out the form, they're doing it on their mobile mobile device. So if your form isn't, you know, if your landing page isn't mobile friendly, forget it. So you need to make sure it's mobile friendly. Number one, number two, um, simple to the point, and they should not be getting lost. The biggest thing when I say lost, do not drive traffic to your landing page and to your website where like over down on the right hand corner it says contact me to fill out a loan application and then all the features and benefits of working with xyz lender that's about like, us contact page privacy policy yeah, forget it links right blog products yeah. and services why us blah 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 right yeah. a million away way a million and one ways to get lost on your site yeah people click through because they were interested Okay, if the ad copy is correct, you need to capture their information and don't allow them to get lost. Because if they get lost, they ain't coming back, mm -hmm. right? Unless your retargeting is on point. So you, the, the landing page has to be simple, to the point, uh, and has to be mobile friendly and structured in a way that I see a lot of people like the amateur guys are like throwing web pages, like throwing up a 15 question. Uh, you know, sequence in one huge long form, right? That's a great like, way to scare like, people and off. And I understand, like, I understand what they're trying to do, but, you know, they're pushing traffic to a landing page and there's 15 questions on that landing page. Like, people have to scroll through. It's not mobile friends. It's terrible, right? So if you, if, 
like our long form leads is a systematic way that we go about pushing them through the process and That's like showing them the way through the process that they're like, oh shit, I'm almost there. I'm almost there. Right. And, and yet we're gathering one more point of data. Right. So it, it's, you know, it's a combination of a lot of things, but the landing page is a big deal too. Like I would say targeting is a third imagery is a third, you know, and landing page is a third. And if all those, you know, if, if they all don't equal one, then forget it. You're going to have a bad campaign, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And a lot of mistakes uh, also are linked to the fact that people have this misconstrued misconception that all this has to be branded, that it has to have their logo and their beautiful mugshot and all their branding information on it, which actually in reality, if you do the split test, in most cases than not, you actually get a better conversion without the branding, without you showing. If you think about it from a cat and mouse perspective, if you're trying to catch a mouse, what do mice like? They like cheese. What do they not like? Whiskers. Why? Whiskers are attached to a big hairy thing that wants to eat them for breakfast, right? And when they see the logo and your mug shot, they think salesperson. Those are whiskers, right? So another premise that a lot of people come to the table with advertising is all my shit has to be branded. Who says? Who says it has to be branded? We found our best results with our clients are unbranded funnels, unbranded ads. So again, all these misconceptions can lead us astray and uh, completely annihilate our chance of success just with one misconception, let alone many. So let's say you nail, you thread the needle on the targeting, you thread the needle on the imagery and the ad copy and the landing page, you nail it, you catch the lead, you get the lead. Now the question is, are you actually going to be able to convert that lead? So let's talk about the last and final area that I think causes a lot of mortgage professionals to get less than an ROI than perhaps they could had they really nailed all the four components. Let's talk about the fourth component, which is follow up. Where do people drop the ball on the follow up? So because a lot of folks will drop the ball on the follow up thinking that, well, you know, it's an exclusive lead. It can wait. Right. Because they're like, oh, we're cool. You know, I, I don't have to get. I don't have to get right on the phone with them, et cetera. And that's not, that's not correct. It doesn't matter if exclusive or, exclusive or not. The, you know, the, the bottom line is, is that if you're not getting on the phone or contacting them within, with, within five minutes, the probability of you converting that lead goes down tremendously, right? So you got to automate the follow-up. I mean, folks that, you know, our clients, right? They, like they're getting, some of these guys are getting 150 to 300 leads a month. And they can't call them on. They can't call on them all, right? Mm -hmm. So you have to automate the follow up. And if you're not automating the follow up, then you you know that the gold like you got to you, you allow technology to kind of sift through the pay dirt. You know, let's just call the leads a pay dirt, right? And you got to mine the gold. And you know, you're just looking for a couple gold nuggets. Well, let technology do that for you. And that's what you know. That's what I highly suggest is you know, a combination of a bunch of things, email, text, voicemail drops, calls, you know, like you got to do it all. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, you know, someone's going, and you got to be consistent and you got to be quick. Right. And it's not a one hit wonder. You can't just send one text, one email, one phone call and think you're going to convert that person. Yeah. It's impossible. It's mm -hmm. impossible. The average person um, to get the highest conversion, you got to reach out to somebody at least seven times. Okay. Mm -hmm. Seven times. After the seventh point of contact, the it's like a hockey stick approach. The the chance of you actually selling that lead and, and converting that lead goes up from like forty percent to ninety. Okay, so but most people most people fail at the second point of contact, which is unfortunate. Okay, mm -hmm. um, and fifty percent, and these these are these are statistics. We we can go into another live, and I'll show you guys this. But these are these are true statistics. Like fifty percent. OK, don't even call the lead, which is amazing. Not once, not once. You paid for the lead. You didn't even call. They just, they just expect the automated stuff to do the trick. Well, no, no they don't. They don't even reach out to them at all. Like there's no automation. They don't like there's zero call. Apparently, so, apparently we need to charge them more so they have more skin in the game, a little fire under their ass to do something about these leads once they get them. Yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> those, are, those are just the statistics in general, right? Right, right, right. But we try to coach guys up and, you know, <laughs> set them on the automation so we don't, 
They don't have to like, we, at least we know there's communication going out. Right. 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 Um, so, you know, and so if you set it kind of on autopilot and just communicate, you know, uh, you know, allow technology to do it, you're, you know, out of a hundred leads, you'll be, you're going to have 35 conversations at least. Right. So mm -hmm. if you, if you can have 35 conversations out of a hundred leads and of people raising their hand and saying, yeah, cool, like let's, let's talk then, you know, unless you completely, you know, are off point in regards to your sales process as an LO, we're trying to take an application. Yeah. So, that's, 15, that's, that's seven to 15 apps right there, depending on your, your sales skills. Right. So 35 conversations, a third of those will turn into applications and then, you know, and then, you know, uh, a third of those will turn into, will, will turn into deals. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, it's a numbers game, just like anything else with Facebook. But if you can, if you got everything on point, you're generating leads at, for a decent cost, you're automating the process and only talking to the people that actually want to talk to you because you're automating, then it's a home run, right? And Absolutely. then you can go out and do, because it's the, the, Facebook's just one pillar, right? It's just one pillar of how you should be getting your business. Then you could go out and do your own thing, right? You can go out and get more realtor relationships. You leverage what you're doing in Facebook to get more realtor relationships. Absolutely. I mean, it's a home run when you can say, hey, look, I'm generating more leads and I have realtors to give them to. Let's have coffee. I'll tell you a little bit about it. Like I started the conversation with, I'll tell you a little bit about it. If you're a good fit, then I'll plug you in. But here's the deal. If I plug you in, you're sending me all your work. Like that's exactly. the deal. All your business, all your buyers. All your business. And here's like, you know, here's whatever, you know, contract you need signed, right? Or whatever. But at yeah. the end of the day, like that's how powerful it is. And it's, it, it speaks volume and it, it gets the pendulum back on the loan officer side, right? Like, like the power pendulum, I call it. Like it's swinging back to our side when you can provide real valuable resources to grow that real estate agent's business. And Facebook allows you to do that. Absolutely. And of course, once you learn how to do this with Facebook, and you're able to now have the cookie in those realtor partnership relationships where you are chasing them. Now the realtor is chasing you. Now the realtor is selling themselves on why they should qualify to be one of your elite few who get to partake in your leads and your pre-approvals and your buyers. It changes everything because I mean, you get one realtor sending you all their business, making you their exclusive. If they're a decent realtor, that's like one or two deals a month. Do yeah, the map man. on that. Do the map on that. How many of those would change your life? Right? It doesn't take many. So this is the game of getting yourself in a place where you guys don't just settle for being great mortgage technicians, but you up level and get the skill set, the muscle required to become great mortgage marketers. That's really what this is about, becoming great mortgage marketers. Great mortgage marketers are the ones who dominate their space. They dominate the rankings in their company. They're least and last affected by market conditions. They pick and choose what realtors they work with. They write their own future. They write their own destiny. They have the ability to write their own ticket. And that's our goal for you. But obviously, you guys got to get with the know. You got to get in the know and you got to get the skill, the knowledge, the marketing prowess to be able to pull this off. It doesn't mean you have to have it all figured out, but you need to have the team in place to be able to pull it off. You could actually not have a clue what to do with this stuff, but have the understanding that you do what you do best and you get the best to do all the rest. That's called champion level entrepreneurship right there. You do what you do best and you get the best to do all the rest. So with that in mind, uh, Chris, thanks for hanging with us. This has been very insightful. I wish we had more time, but we're up on time. So yes. for those of you who would like to get into uh, more distinction, more clarity as to how we can help you to really leapfrog into this uh, Facebook advertising space and win without the trouble and struggle of trial and error, trying to figure it out on your own, and really condense decades into days and knock it out of the park a whole lot faster, sooner, easier than you trying to mess around doing it on your own. I invite you guys to take advantage of a complimentary breakthrough call with one of our consultants at mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. I'm gonna put it up on the screen there. Mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. It's a one hour complimentary breakthrough call with one of our uh, consultants that will give you an opportunity to get clarity on where you are now where you want to be and how we can help you get there. Not just with Facebook ads, not just with learning how to generate your own leads through digital marketing, but also how to mine the gold from your database, how to attract more solid committed realtor partners who make you their exclusive and how to diversify your lead streams so that you can get from where you are to where you want to be faster, easier, better. It's called 
the shortest path to the cash, friends, getting you there better, faster, easier. So if that sounds meaningful and worthwhile to you, check us out, mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. And if we decide that uh, we're the right fit to work together, then uh, obviously that'll be the next part of the conversation. And you would indeed, if that were the case, if we were to let you in and you decide to step up and commit to your breakthrough with us, uh, you would have the secret sauce from the real deal, Chris Real, because he's behind the scenes helping our clients get wicked results through Facebook ads. And he's doing it all for you. So that would be part of the conversation if we decide you're the right fit and you decide to step up and commit to your breakthrough. So, Chris, thanks for hanging with me today, man. This was fun. Yeah, man. As always, it's, uh, it was a blast. Look forward to, um, to more of it. Yeah, we'll, we'll do another topic, uh, maybe on another slant. Uh, we only scratched the surface of the surface today. So it's uh, always a perennial frustration for me because we could literally spend probably an hour just on one of those pillars, let alone all four. But yeah. uh, hopefully people got uh, some value, some distinction, some clarity. So thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for being with us. And uh, go forth now, take massive action, get massive results. And if we can be part of that process, by all means, reach out to us and let's explore your options. MortgageMarketingCoach.com forward slash apply. Thanks for hanging with us, guys. Be well, be blessed. We'll talk to you soon. Peace.